presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, mighty visitor from another world, who came to Earth when the planet Krypton was destroyed by quakes and explosions. Superman, who can twist steel in his bare hand, leap tall buildings at a single bound, and walks about among human beings disguised as Miles Clark Kent, news reporter. Searching for a $2 million treasure in gold that has lain for centuries in a Spanish galleon at the bottom of Octopus Bay, Kent, Professor Thorpe, and Diver Gleason have descended to the ocean floor in Thorpe's remarkable bathysphere, a deep-sea diving bell. Earlier, Kent, as Superman, had defeated several attempts by Pete Escobar, a Caribbean desperado, to seize the bathysphere and get the gold for himself. When we last saw Kent, he and Professor Thorpe were in the bathysphere, waiting for Gleason, the professional diver, who had ventured out into the octopus-infested bay. But suddenly the air became hot and foul, and when Professor Thorpe fainted, Kent stepped to the speaking tube to call Captain Maddox on board the Juanita, anchored 300 feet above them. As our story continues today, Kent is still at the tube, desperately calling Maddox. Listen. Hello? Hello, Captain Maddox. Hello, hello. Oh, it's no use. Speaking tube is out of order, too. Ah, this is a job for Superman. Got to get Thorpe out of here. No time to lose. But if I smash through the side of the bathysphere, I'll ruin it and doom Gleason, the diver. But if I don't, we'll all die here. Even Superman can't live without air. Wait. Hold on. The safety chamber. If I can manage to get out through it and close the doors without letting the ocean in, I might be able to find the break in that airline. Ah, here we are. The safety chamber. One more huge door between me and the sea. Oh, wait a moment. Thorpe said something about compressed air emptying the safety chamber and closing the outer door. I'd better get that first so the professor will be protected. There. Now to close the inner door. And open the outer one. I hope that compressed air holds out long enough to keep the safety chamber free from water until I return. Ah, it worked. Now, out we go into the water and close the door. There. That door is sealed shut. The water pressure down here is terrific. I've got to work fast. Find out what's wrong with the airline and speaking tube. Oh, great Scott, what's that? An octopus. A huge octopus with its tentacles wrapped around our connections to the surface. So that's what's causing the trouble. Well, I'll soon settle him. Up, up, up. Come on. Unwrap yourself from those lines. Oh, suction cups are mighty powerful. I guess I'll have to pull his tentacles off. Here goes. There, he's giving. A bit more and I'll have those lines free. Now then. Ah, broke him loose. Oh, but he's other tentacles around me. Trying to crush me, eh? Ah, he's giving all right. Now, one last punch, all my strength. Ah, hit him square in the middle. Finished him. Now, back to the bathysphere and Professor Thorpe. Down, down. Here I am. Are you all right, Professor? My throat feels like sandpaper. What happened? I guess the air supply failed and you passed out. I began to feel pretty weak myself. What happened? What failed you? I don't know. The airline must have become twisted. A few minutes later, it worked free again. Thank heaven for that. Must have been at the time, I'd say. Yes. Professor, that noise. Oh, please, me. Back from the door, ship. Oh. I'll let him in. All right. He comes to the outer door, into the safety chamber. We we'll let the air force the water out of the chamber. And then we we'll open the door. Now, Professor? No. No, give the air another moment. All right, then. Gleason. 
What's the box you're carrying? He gave here you with that diving helmet on his head, Ken. Oh, yes, I forgot. Take that box away from him. You can help me get his diving helmet off. Okay. Well, Jason? Well, that sure feels better. Greetings, folks. For heaven's sake, Jason. What did you find? Yes, what's in that box? One question at a time. First you, Professor. I found the gold ship, just where you said it would be. You did? What about the gold? Open that box. The box? Just a second, Professor. I'm opening it. Great Scott. Gold. Spanish doubloon. The gold of the treasure ship. Hundreds of them. And that's only a small part of it, Professor. I left about ten more of those boxes back in the ship. I couldn't carry them. Kent, Gleason, I succeeded. Oh, you don't know what this means to me. It's not the gold itself. I know, Professor. Now you can build your institute of science. Yes, Kent. A nice dream come true. I can hardly believe it. Oh, you'd believe it, all right. If you saw the boxes piled up inside the hull of that old ship. Gleason, how long will it take you to transfer all the boxes to the battlefield? Oh, about... Now, I guess. Well, hurry. Let's get to work. Bring them here. Okay. Hello. Hello, Professor Thorpe. That's Captain Maddox calling us. I'll take it, Kent. All right. Hello, Captain Maddox. Thorpe speaking. Professor, I've been trying to reach you for a few minutes, but you didn't answer. The sky is badly overcast up here. Looks like a storm gathering. Now, don't worry about that, Captain. I've great news for you. You found the treasure ship? And the gold, too. Boxes full of it. Please and just brought it in. Oh, that's wonderful, sir, wonderful. But you better come on up. Come up? What for? I've already told you. There's a storm brewing. The barometer is falling, and it looks like we're in for a blow. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain, but we must stay down here. Only an hour more. Professor, you're taking your life in your hands. Oh, nonsense, Captain, nonsense. Professor Thorpe, listen to me. Hold on a moment, Captain. What is it, Kent? I heard what the Captain said about the storm. He's right, Professor. Oh, you too, Kent. Uh, what do you think, Gleason? You should know about these things. Well, it might be dangerous if it blows, but I'm not afraid. Anything you say, Professor? I say continue to work. Get out the gold while the getting is good. Oh, Professor Thorpe, don't let the gold make you foolhardy. Captain Maddox knows what he's talking about. Even Gleason admits it's dangerous. But Ken... But... Gleason's the man who will take most of the risk. He might be separated from the bathysphere during the storm. You have no right to gamble with a man's life, not even for a few minutes. Well, well, perhaps you're right, Ken. Perhaps the sight of this gold has got the better of me. And you will go up to the surface? Yes, Ken. I'll have a look at the barometer. See, see just how close that storm actually is. Hello? Hello, Captain Maddox? Yes, sir. Bring the bath that's to the surface. Aye, aye, sir. Well, here we go now. <laughs> The cable meter reads 50 fathoms, Captain. Been that way for several minutes. Well, that means they're at the bottom. I told them not to get down again. I warned them. Worried about the storm, Captain? Yes, I am. It's coming, Kent, and it looks bad. Well, we did our best to stop them. Nothing could hold the professor back after he saw the barometer had only dropped two points. Yes, but it's dropped ten more in the last few minutes. Captain, that, that thunder and those clouds overhead. Yeah, the storm is about to break. Call Professor Thorpe. Get the bathysphere up here immediately. Where are you going? Got to batten down the hatches. Stand by the anchors. All hands on deck. All hands on deck. Hello. Hello, Professor Thorpe. The storm broke, sir. You'd better come up quickly. Oh, yes. Mountainous waves. Call me back as soon as Gleason returns to the bathysphere, but don't waste a moment. Kent! Kent, the anchors. What's the matter with them, Captain? Wind's too strong. They're slipping. This is a hurricane. We're being driven through the rocks. So, what do we do? Oh, one side, Kent. I've got to work fast. Mr. Conroy, I want full steam up. Give her every ounce of fence. Try to get headway. Aye, aye, sir. You men, bring out the anchor. All right, move fast. Look alive down there. He's up on that starboard hauser. Aye, sir. Hey, Hamilton. Fire the fort. Come on, get the wheel over! Oh, Kent. If we can only get her nose up into the wind, we may be able to hold her steady. I think you can 
do it, Captain? No, it's one chance in a million, Kent. This looks like it's going to be the worst blow I've seen in all my 30 years of training. Captain. 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 What is it, Conroy? No use, sir. We're not making a foot of headway against this gale. Keep on trying. Hold that wheel over. The sea anchor should help. What's wrong with it? It's gone. The line snapped. Canvas ripped into shreds. Oh, oh I was afraid of that. Well, isn't there anything else we can do, Captain? Can't, I'm afraid we're licked. What, what about Thorpe and Gleason? The Baptist Fair will be dragged along the bottom. They'll be killed. Can't help it, Kent. There's nothing we can do. What? She won't hold in this sea. What? The Baptist Fair? We, we can try to bring it up. No, no, don't touch it. They'll snap the airline and they'll suffocate. You mean to say you're going to stand by and let them die like trapped rats? Kent, all we can do is hope for the best. The anchors may catch and hold before we hit the rocks. Either that, or we're all doomed. Caught in the wild, screaming fury of a tropical hurricane, the Juanita, pounded by mountainous waves, is driven closer and closer to the jagged rocks that line the shore of Octopus Bay. Can Kent, as Superman, save the helpless ship from certain destruction? Will he be forced to sacrifice the lives of Professor Thorpe and Gleason, trapped in the diving bell 300 feet below the raging surface of the water? Don't fail to tune in next time and follow the thrilling story with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. <laughs>